Hey everyone, you're watching Build Series in New York City. I'm Laura Moraski from HuffPost with our next guest. Grammy-nominated Norwegian artist Jarla Bernhoft released his solo debut in 2008 and has gone on to make waves both here and around the world. He's now out with his latest album, this time with a fashion bruises. He joins me now to talk about it, so give a warm welcome to Jarla Bernhoft. I pronounced your name correctly, yeah? It's uh, as correct as you can be expected. <laughs> it's a, so difficult. It's a difficult language. It's a difficult language. So, if, like officially, how would you say it? Uh, the full name is uh, Jarle Norman Bernhoft uh, Shodin. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm glad it's I didn't attempt that. No. <laughs> but it's a nice name and beautiful music because we're in for a real treat today because not only do we sit down for 15, 20 minutes here on the build stage, but also we're going to get a performance from you as well. So we're really excited about that. Cool. And you're back to, with familiar territory. You lived in New York for a, a, quite a bit. I lived there for two years, yeah. yeah. Brought, the, brought the family. I have a family. And uh, I moved here in 2013. Okay. To 15. Yeah. And well, any favorite haunts? Where did you live while you were here? Well, it was uh, a year at the uh, almost like Upper West Side, close to Mornington Heights. Um, we eventually moved down to Brooklyn. Because, okay. you know, all our friends were there. <laughs> Everyone's in Brooklyn. Anybody here live in Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah, uh, like half the audience raised their hands. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, we're really excited to have you back in a great new album to talk about. It's been a minute. Um, how does it feel now that it's it's actually out in the world? Uh, it's glorious. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, to, to have... Because to album making an album takes a long time, and you sit on it for quite a long while after it's mixed and it's mastered and... And you just wait for it, and it's almost like a creative stopper. You can't really, I can't really sit down and write new songs until it's out. So it, it was, uh, it was fantastic to get it out there. Yeah, well, we're excited to have it out there too. The title, I feel, has a lot to do with what you wanted to say on the album. Um, Humanoid is a song on the album, but what else does it kind of represent for you? Um, a lot of things, but I think. The, the, the first, and f first and foremost is for me a uh, reflection on what it is to be human in, a, in today's world. I mean, we're subjected to so many, like, not just algorithms that affect uh, elections, for instance, but, but also, um, uh, like, I see people talking to each other and they're not looking into each other's eyes, right? They're, they're on their phones all the time. And I'm, I know I'm sounding like a grumpy old, like, tech <laughs> pessimist, which I'm not. Because yeah. I, I do believe it's a, like the, the smartphone is a huge possibility for, for me anyway to, to engage with people all over the globe. But it's just, it's almost like we haven't learned to use technology yet. It's almost, it feels like we're getting used by technology. And it reflects in the music, too. Because it, it, I am not, again, not a grumpy, you know, I'm not against music being synthetic in a way. Right. But it, I almost like when I f hear a human voice that is so processed that it almost feels like it's made by a computer and made by algorithms. I, it's almost like I draw a line there. I can't really connect to music that sounds thoroughly machine-like. Mm -hmm. So... So I wanted to go the other way musically too, and and hence almost like a very old-fashioned way of making an album with you know a band rehearsing a band playing live shows, going back to rehearsal, recording it live. It was a fun process, um, but it 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 seems to me like whenever I talk about it, I feel uh, feel like I'm sounding very. Everything was better before. And it wasn't. Yeah. Like everything is better now. But uh, if if we had introduced alcohol today, I think people would have been stark raving drunk right. all the time. Because yeah. it's almost it takes takes a few years for for mankind to adapt to new stuff, whether it be drink or yeah. or computers. I think you're not the only one who's kind of having this sit back and listen moment and thinking, okay, what am I doing with my technology? How am I using this? How is my family interacting with it? Mm. And I think it's cool that you're putting it out there and you know, making everyone else think about it as well. Yeah, because I, I heard someone say once that every, every in, uh, enhancement is also an amputation. It's almost like you can sit down and you're wondering how, just, if you just try for 10 seconds to remember who was in that movie, instead of just going to Google. And it, it, I think it's very smart for 
our brains. Yeah. And so we just don't upload our brains into the cloud. That we actually try and stick them to our heads. Being a musician, in addition to sort of like creating this album more organically, you kind of have to be connected with your fans via social media. So how do you sort of keep that balance of keeping in touch with your fans and, and everybody, but also saying, okay, I need this moment for myself and my family and friends? Uh, that is really hard. Uh, I tend to treat social media more like a one-way communication channel, uh, which is not very communicative in many ways. But... Um, it's. Uh, I know people I'm working with want me to be more engaged, mm -hmm. but then uh, I have this very real sensation of my two sons going. I need you to be more here right now. Yeah. yeah. And um, and I'm. St uh, I wouldn't say it's second to music. I'm 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 an ambitious dad. I want to be a good one. That's great. How old are your kids? Uh, eight and a half and one and a half. Oh wow! Tried seven years apart. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot to handle, man. That's stupid. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in there, they're good kids. That's great. So back to the album. Is there one song that you would say on the new record that kind of really stands out to you that represents the record? Well, it's the first time I had a, like a title track. Yeah. Because I've, I've the, the the albums I made. I'm almost every album I've made has has been. You know, a title for the album, and then a lot of songs that hasn't shared any titles. I think Humanoid is, is representative, but there is also, I mean, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm concerned about the state of the world in, in many of these songs. I mean, California is about not just California burning up, but uh, this westward longing that I have, because I mean, it's I have I am Norwegian, but my music is more American than Norwegian. In many ways, I'm always drawn to this westward, this is west world. Uh, I'm drawn to that too. But uh, I'm when I was growing up, it was west was good, east was bad, and then you come to, come to California and you see Hollywood, and it all feels glossy. But then you go to the backwaters of California, and it's and it's the saddest thing, you know. And um, but I just I, I try to reflect on things, but I think the humanoid is probably the song. It's 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 upbeat. It's not pessimistic at all. It's just, hey, get out there, <laughs> look at me. Yeah, I feel like that's on a couple of other tracks on the record too. Like, don't give up. There's a few other like you know tracks on the record that kind of like speak to that. Yeah. But at the same time, it seems like you were inspired by the what's going on in the world right now, and some of that's not so happy no I, I had a big crisis actually uh, back in uh, when was that June two years ago when when brexit happened uh, and and I was on Iceland at at the time and I re remember waking up and said they, they've actually voted to, to exit the European Union I was, it's just going off its hinges I, I didn't know what was going on um, and this movement that is passing through Europe and I think in America as well with you know, you view immigration as just negative, and it's being spinned as just negative. I think that cultural exchange is what makes us human, mm -hmm. and so we need to deal with a lot of things that's going on in, in the Middle East, and, and of course that produces a lot of uh, movement of people, mm -hmm. and we need to deal with it better than we do. And uh, for some reason, the, the people in Britain said, or half of them yeah. said, no, we didn't want them. And uh, and then the election here happened. I think it shocked many. Still yeah. it's going on, shocking a lot of people. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, the um, the algorithms seem to be playing, uh, seem to be, have, have been played, uh, have, have played a, a huge part in both those events. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm curious to see what's going on now. The next elections. Yeah, yeah. Time will tell, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you started off playing with a, like hard rock, like rock band, mm -hmm. and then you, you know, you you done solo material, and th this you decide to go back to a band. Uh, why do the band versus the solo kind of material? I was tired of myself, <laughs> but it's but it's 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 true. You know, yeah. you just, when I did the solo thing, it's uh, it's it's me, and then I it duplicate me using nifty boxes, yeah. and then th there's layers upon layers of just me. And that's fun to dabble in, and basically it comes from almost like a, an insecurity, whether I can cut it just standing up alone, 
playing a, a piano or a guitar and singing my songs. Huh. But then I found it so enriching to play with other people that I just had to do it. It's, there are, it's the most fun way I have of, of spending tons of money. <laughs> Bring the band back together, yeah. right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, you came from a musical family though, right? I yeah. did, yeah. Yeah, so was it, do you feel like it was in your blood to sort of be a musician? Was there any time in your life that you thought, okay, I'm going to dabble with this other career? Yeah, that's a, that's a big discussion, I mean, whether it's, uh, it's genes or environment. But I, w I would say that in our home, there was not much music going on at, at home. But then, you know, coming with my dad to work, uh, you know, at the age of seven, I probably heard every major opera there is. So it's music kind of seeped in there. And then my mom was a music teacher. And then I, when I went with her to work, because I, I didn't have kindergarten when I was a kid. Huh. So I just had to kind of like wiggle around a bit. Yeah. So it, it, it seeped in, but I'm not sure whether... I'm not sure what blood has to do with it, because it, you know, I mean, my the music that I get a huge kick out of is is African American music, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's not much. Uh, I wouldn't say there's much African blood in in me or my parents. Yeah, and you 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 know, it, you've said before that you have a hard time classifying your own music. Do you still find yeah. that to be the case? Yeah, I do, because I mean, uh, I I release a statement after the Grammy nomination yeah. in, in the R and B album category. So right. It's, it's, they have spoken. I, I, I play R&B music. <laughs> and I didn't know. And then I made this album, which is clearly not a, uh, a follow-up to that album. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's, it's got elements of, of R&B for mm -hmm. sure. There's elements of soul in there. But uh, this is more like a, it almost feels more like a rock and roll album. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure, though. You, you mentioned Don't Give Up, and that's, uh, that's a different vibe altogether. So I, we haven't been scared to kind of exploit different styles at all. It's just good. It just felt good to leave the album on a high note, going up in a, yes. in a very optimistic way, which I haven't done for my previous albums. So it's been very... <laughs> for the last song. It gives us a little hope at the end of the album, that's for sure. That, that R&B Grammy nom, it seems like it still baffles you. It does, yeah. It's almost like a Turkey and guy being nominated for Norwegian folk music. Yeah. Uh, it felt it felt strange indeed. But to be honest, it was a it's a big big come down actually on the yeah. on the on the night because uh, so you're going up there and you get the the nomination and you you have a statistically you have a f it's like a twenty percent chance of getting that that award. And as soon as you don't get the award, you're just a uh, past nominee, no one remembers you. <laughs> I still do, though. I'm clinging to it. <laughs> Although in my intro, I definitely mentioned the Grammy nom. You'll sure. always be described as a Grammy-nominated yeah. artist from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem getting a visa to the, um, <laughs> the United States, actually. Did you um, feel any pressure? You know, it's been a few years, sort of kind of following up that album and, you know, this to this one? Maybe subconsciously. Yeah. I'm not sure. I've released a couple of EPs in the, in the meantime. Um, but... I'm not sure how, because I can't really feel my nerves. Mm -hmm. I can't feel my nerves. Yeah. It, it sounded very strange and dramatic, <laughs> but uh, it's almost like I don't know. One thing is playing without a microphone, like just standing up in a room and playing to people, and there's no microphone between me and the people. It feels like it's the soul unfiltered coming out. That makes me nervous. But other than that, I don't really feel nervous in, in, in any way. Yeah. But it might be that, you know, internally on some level that I am i don't have access to, that I'm, you know, really tense about stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, how to make the follow-up to the Grammy-nominated album do a different style of album. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, it works. And I know, you know, you're performing tonight at the Bowery Ballroom. You're on tour. Is that ever nerve-wracking when you're getting on stage trying to prepare your set list and figuring out, like, what to perform? It is if I don't feel I have the 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 surplus to do it because it it demands a lot of energy and uh, so I woke up this morning and I felt uh, da -da -da -da. I, I felt almost uh, like the the throat was sore and I was doing this and I was like yeah. Yeah. tensing up <laughs> but meditation always works yeah so. that's what that's your that's your uh, relief right yeah it works running and then lying down not doing anything. 
So you said at the earlier uh, part of this interview that now that you put this album to bed sort of thing, you put this out rather, uh, you can start thinking about writing new music. Have you started writing new music already? I have, yeah. Really? Mm, it's not, uh, no solid finished songs yet, but lots of ideas. Um, but it's it's good, you know, releasing an album is good because you, you almost, you lose ownership of it. It's almost like a kid moving away from home. Um, that you just have to let them, you know, study and get drunk and <laughs> be human beings and yeah. figure out, you know, making mistakes themselves. Exactly. Well, we have a couple of questions from the crowd before we hear you perform, so let's get to those right now. Great. All right, who's first? Oh, right here. Hi. Um, so I'm wondering, is there a particular song that you like to perform and why? Like all the new ones, because I haven't, I haven't played, uh, you know, with the old songs, we still... I still love doing them, but there's something that I need to rearrange the old songs every now and then. But the new songs, especially, especially Don't Give Up, actually, we haven't really played that live yet to, mm -hmm. to anyone. We're still rehearsing it, but I feel a rush, you know, when it builds up and, you know, the modulation comes in, it's, it's a huge kick. So, uh, yeah, the newer, the better. Cool. Yeah. All right, who's next? Hello. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if there was any artist that you would love to collab with and why. Oh, I have this huge thing for uh, a guy called Lewis Taylor. Lewis Taylor is a British new soul artist released, I think it's the debut album, 94. Very strange. I mean, it's, uh, to me, that was, you know, along with Sly Stone, Sly and the Family Stone, that was a huge kick. To, it was almost like trajectory shifting for me to go in a new direction and, and do the music, style of music that I have done up till now. Um, I think he kind of disappeared. There's rumors that he sued his own fan club. He just didn't want to be associated with Lewis Taylor. And some say he's working as a plumber in Sheffield, UK. But uh, other people have, have you know, reportedly seen him do, like a member of a band here and there, but not you know, as, a, as Lewis Taylor, the, the, the artist. But if I can lure him out, it'll be a good job. That's so interesting. Thank you. <laughs> we got to track him down. <laughs> we got to track yeah. him down. <laughs> You're watching Lewis Taylor. might not be called Lewis Taylor yeah. anymore. I don't know. There, it sounds like something out of a movie. Yeah. You know? Well, thank you for those questions. And thank you so much for coming by today to talk about the new album. The new album, Humanoid, is out now. He's on tour. Give it up one more time for Burnhoff, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs>